Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to Grade Up, India's biggest e-learning platform. So I welcome you all to this live session of the second class of KS topic. So good evening, guys. Uh, please respond to me so those who are live with me so that I will be able to know like you have connected with me. <clears throat> good evening, guys. So uh, in the previous class, if I talk about the yesterday's class, we have a discussion of uh, the gears first topic, the basic classifications of gear and about uh, the what is the terminology of the gears. Very good evening, Pawan. Very good, good evening, Ramesh Mohan. <clears throat> and I hope so. And please do let me know uh, if my audio is clear. If not, I'll be doing some adjustment for you guys. Uh, good evening, Mayur. Is am I audible clear? Then only I'll be starting the lecture. A uh, good evening, Madhav Rao. <clears throat> so uh, I welcome you to the live session of Gears Two. So in today's uh, session, we'll be talking about the basic concept of gears. Fine. So <clears throat> what is that basic concept? Uh, we'll be talking about the law of gearing the most important topic and students do have some confusion in this topic so we'll be having what is this law of gearing and what uh, is the application of this and what are the different types of profile and what are this profile the meaning of these profiles okay fine now it's clear uh, video is lagging uh, it might be due to uh, some net issue but now it, i suppose uh, when the session will be started it will be clear uh, good evening, uh, Neha. Good evening, Mayur. Oh, it's okay now. Uh, the video is not lagging, I suppose. <clears throat> okay, now let us start today's session. <clears throat> good evening, Hema. Now, the first and the foremost important thing is you all guys need to be safe. <clears throat> so for that, WHO has, uh, has given the 12 steps to wash your hands. So you need to protect yourself because you can definitely, if you are healthy, you can uh, wash, uh, you, you will be, you can crack any examination. So first and the foremost thing is you need to be stay healthy. <clears throat> yes, what is your doubt, uh, Neha? Uh, what is your doubt, Neha Mishra? So uh, if I talk about you need to uh, <clears throat> uh, wet your hands, then you need to apply soap. Uh, the third step is you need to rub your hands palm to palm so this is the basic 12 steps to how to wash your uh, your hands and this is given by who and we are uh, spreading this uh, information to all of our uh, grade up students and also uh, all the students so that they will be benefited from our uh, information and also the message which who wants to give from us okay good evening uh, pawan good evening ravin <coughs> Uh, can we access the classes for free? Yes, definitely. At present, uh, the classes free trial is going on, I suppose. So you can definitely enjoy the free trial classes. Uh, the next class will be at 9.30. Uh, fluid mechanics is going on. So you can uh, uh, make your account. You can log into the Grade Up app platform and uh, you can uh, uh, log in and you can enjoy the classes. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the next and the four most important thing is if you or anyone near nearby uh, is having some symptoms of coronavirus so definitely you need to contact this number this is plus nine uh, one double one two three nine seven eight zero four six <clears throat> so you can if you're having any issues if you're having any doubt this number is always uh, is there it is given by indian government so that you can prep smart and stay safe by using this so we all together need to stand uh, because whole country not country whole world is now standing against this virus coronavirus so we also request all of you to please be alert be attentive stay healthy stay at your home enjoy the live classes which are going on on the greater platform and just don't uh, 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 go outside so that it is not infecting you okay fine so again i welcome you to this live class <clears throat> now let us start today's session now, uh, like I've told you, we'll be having a discussion on uh, the law of gearing. Okay. Now, 
for law of gearing uh, first of all let me introduce myself my name is suraj gopi i have 5 plus of year experience i usually i have a thermal science background i usually uh, take classes for gate esc and sscj and my area of expertise are mechanics uh, thermal applied uh, your uh, industrial engineering uh, mechanics uh, theory machine and heat transfer okay so this is my area of expertise and usually teach these subjects only on the platform fine so let me start today's session this uh, the first topic and the most important topic is law of gearing we'll be understanding in detail in today's session about <coughs> the law of gearing uh, <coughs> uh when was first class for batch 2 in tom was conducted uh, uh dear neha uh, till now tom has not been started the first subject is going on which is fluid mechanics in batch 2 so vikas sir is taking that subject after that i'll be, uh, make, uh, mathematics will be there and uh, after that we'll be having the complete series so don't worry the machine has not been started in batch 1 <clears throat> uh sir small intro to gear sir uh, mukesh i have uh, have a discussion in the yesterday's class about uh, what do you mean by gear what is the definition of gear about positive drive negative drive different classification of gear we have had a detailed discussion yesterday okay so it is a continuation to the yesterday's lecture only so we'll be having a discussion of law of gearing okay good evening uh, shemu good evening uh, raghav <clears throat> now law of gearing now most of the students will be having doubt what is this law of gearing <clears throat> now for any two gears if any two gears are in mesh they need to have this law to be satisfied now for that for understanding how uh, this law of gearing is occurring let us assume there are two uh, uh, teeth let us suppose two teeth this is teeth number 1 okay this is a teeth number 1 which is um, marking the red marker having a center at o1 and this is teeth number 2 at the center o2 okay so we are having two teeth and i am not defining this as a gear let us suppose we are having only two teeth which is having a point of contact at point q so we are having a point of contact at point q this is a point of contact at point q fine uh uh yes what is your doubt neha then this one this is a free series uh, will be will be having all the subjects only some portion will be taken in the youtube platform for all you guys so that you can uh get a glimpse of what will be having in the live classroom but uh, uh due to this corona effect we have come to this tablet form but uh normally our classes are in smart board and most of the students might have seen my lectures okay <clears throat> okay now so there are two teeth uh, this is teeth number 1 this is teeth number 1 and this is teeth number 2 so they are having a point of contact at point q okay so this is a uh, <clears throat> your center at o1 and this is your center at o2 okay center o1 and o2 uh, babu rao ganpat uh, audio is also lagging uh, now it's okay i suppose now you should not be having any issue uh, with the audio lagging please respond to me so that i can continue my lectures <clears throat> now let uh, what is basically happening <clears throat> so we are having these two teeth so two teeth are there whose center is o1 and the second center is o2 the teeth number 1 is rotating the angular uh, rotation of omega 1 and this is rotating the angular rotation of omega 2 okay so are you able to visualize it there are two teeth one this is the teeth one this is the teeth number 2 so uh you are having this teeth one teeth two we are having a point of contact like this okay now <clears throat> Uh, sir please try to uh, use more images to make us understood good yes i'm using in every session i'm using uh, uh, your images so that you are not having any confusion so if i again uh, write it so we are having a teeth this is your teeth number 1 having center at o1 and this is your second teeth i'm writing also drawing for you guys this is your center o2 so this is your point of contact q the same thing is written over here okay fine now let us make a dot uh, join these two points o1 and o2 fine o1 q and o2 q clear so if i take what is the velocity of point q with respect to o1 now please tell me if this is the point of contact 
we are having a rotation omega 1 so we'll be having a velocity perpendicular to this line so we'll be having a velocity perpendicular to this line which is your velocity v1 same velocity is written over this is your v1 which is perpendicular to the line o1 q okay this is perpendicular to line o1 q and second will be the velocity v2 will be like this this is will be your v2 so v2 is perpendicular to o2 q. is that clear where uh, v1 will be equal to what is uh, velocity if this is uh, your distance o2 q so v1 will be equal to o2 q into omega 1 and v2 is equal to sorry this is v1 fine the v2 will be equal to o2 q into omega 2 fine same thing is written over v2 is equal to q uh, o2 q into omega 1 and v1 is equal to o1 q into omega 1 here so we are having two velocities now uh, let us draw a line let us draw a line such that this is a line a straight line okay it's passing through point q this is the line is known as line of action this line is known as line of action i'm i'm rubbing all the uh, thing which i've written so that you can understand now this is a line of action that means what is line of action anyone who can tell me what is the meaning of line of action the meaning of line of action is you can see your point of contact is point q so if let us suppose after some time you'll be having a new location so this point of contact will be moving along this line this will be moving along this line okay the point of contact of the two here this is point q after some point of time what will happen it will be having a point of contact over here okay so this point q is basically moving between point n and point m is that clear so this your point q this is the point of contact is moving between point n and point n clear <clears throat> now if i want to have to be proper contact now let's understand in detail for proper contact for proper contact for proper contact what should be the criteria anyone for proper contact your v1 cos alpha should be equal to v2 cos v2 cos beta is that clear so uh, for uh, for proper contact now uh, let me also tell you what is the angle alpha and beta let us draw a perpendicular on this line fine this is the perpendicular on this line clear fine so this is a perpendicular on this line let me rub this so this o1 m is perpendicular to the line of action so o1 o1 m is perpendicular to line of action okay similarly o2 n is perpendicular to line of action is that clear <clears throat> So this uh, this line of force you should be knowing what is line of force line of force is basically the contact point is moving along this line of action that means this point Q is moving from point N to point M after this this two gears or the two T's will be disengaged so we can say your point N will be the start of engagement are you able to visualize it fine and point m will be the end of engagement is that clear <clears throat> fine so there are basically if i say there are two teeth let, let us uh, please all of you uh, listen to me clearly there are two teeth this is teeth one teeth two so we are having a point of contact like this will be rotating like this and after that will be moving Will be leaving so we're having a start of contact and end of contact fine so there are two uh, things going on so point q is traveling from n1 n to point m is that clear is that clear please tell me if you're having any doubt so your point q is moving from point n to point m clear it is moving from point n to point m and alpha is basically the angle between the line joining the center to the point of contact with the perpendicular. This is the alpha angle. Similarly, the beta is this one. Okay. Fine. Clear. So, if this is beta, this is your uh, speed number 2. So, your angle with this will also be 
beta this is beta similarly this complete angle with this is alpha okay clear fine now if i want to say if we want to have these teeth to be in these teeth to be in proper contact if this teeth to be in proper contact that means what meaning of proper contact that means they should be always be having a constant touch with each other so in that case we can say v1 cos v1 cos alpha is equal to v2 cos beta that means the cos component for both the velocities that means this this is your v1 this is your v1 velocity okay, this is your v1 velocity this is your alpha so uh, along along the m n direction that means along the m n direction if you take the cos component of both the velocity that should be equal then only we'll be having the proper contact then only will be having the proper contact is that clear that means v1 cos alpha is equal to v2 cos beta clear now what is v1 just now we have understood what is v1 v1 is o1 q into omega 1 cos alpha is equal to o o2 q into omega 2 cos beta <clears throat> clear let me write over here so for proper contact we should be having o1 q into omega 1 the distance between o1 and point q what is point q q is the the point of contact into cos alpha is equal to o2 into q into omega 2 cos beta clear <clears throat> is that clear video is lagging uh, lagging uh, madhav rao please uh, tell me if you're having issue for understanding or if you if you're having issue with the video or audio lagging please tell me so that we can have a rectification i want everyone to please be attentive uh, due to this corona effect we are bound to take the lectures like this so so now it's okay fine now if i talk about if you go to the previous slide if you see this triangle that means if i draw again this is your point o1 fine and this is your point this is your point q okay this is your point q fine fine this is o1 q and we are having this is your O2 and we are having a straight line. We are having a straight line like this, which is the line of action. Okay. On which we are having a perpendicular line like this, where this point is N and this point is M. This is alpha and this is beta. Clear? Any doubt? Now, if I say, uh, what is cos alpha? Yes, tell me what is cos alpha, please. I want everyone to respond. Uh, my manual Benny video is lagging. <clears throat> no, now it should not be lagging. So uh, we can write O1 Q into omega 1 into what is cos alpha? Cos alpha will be O1 M by O1 2 is equal to O2 Q into omega 2 into what is cos beta? Cos beta is O2 N upon O2 Q. Clear? Now this will be cancelled out. This will be cancelled out. These two terms will be cancelled out. So we can directly say omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to is equal to O2N upon O1M. Uh, video is still lagging. Audio is correct. So don't worry, just don't look at me. Just you need to understand, you need to understand the concept. So omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to O2N by O1. Clear? 
fine now let us say this is equation number one so we have found one equation clear now if you see again this diagram i have drawn it for you guys so that you can understand now <clears throat> if i join the two centers o1 and o2 if i join the two centers o1 and o2 the point at which it is cutting the line of action let us suppose that point is p that means if i join this line o1 and o2 the point at which it is joining let us suppose this point is p okay please try to now this is the most important thing in law of gearing this point p is the most important thing and i want everyone to please be attentive when i am taking this section okay <clears throat> Now, the same thing I have written. So, I have joined the O1 and O2, the point at which it is intersecting the line of action is point P. Okay. So, same diagram for your easiness. Now, you can, if you see a triangle, if you see, uh, see the triangle O1, M, P and triangle O2, N, P. Let us take these two triangles. We can say O2, N, by O1 M is equal to O1 P by O2 P is equal to N P by N M. Anyone who can tell me uh, how can I write these, this statement? <clears throat> Anyone please tell me uh, how can I write this statement because this is very important. This is basically these two triangles, triangle O1 MP and O2 NP is they are similar triangles. They are similar triangles. So we can write this. Now if you go to the previous slide, so omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to O2 N by O1 M, O2 1 by omega. So this is also equal to omega 1 by omega 2. <coughs> is that clear? So what's the meaning of this? <coughs> the meaning of this is that means the line of action must always pass through the fixed point on the center of uh, on, on the line joining the center of the rotation of the gear teeth or gear okay that means always the line of action this is your line of action the uh, this uh, line f is a line of action this is your line of action okay so the line of action must always pass through a fixed point on the line joining the center because if i'm saying it is a uh, it's a similar triangle so this will always be a this will always be a fixed point. This will always be a fixed point. Okay. So this is basically the law of gearing. <clears throat> Fine. This is basically the law of gearing. Okay. Now let us assume. Let us assume. If if I assume if these bodies, if these bodies are gear. If I assume these two bodies, what is this? This body O1 and this body O2 is gear. So due to that, what we can say, we can say directly like omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to constant. We have understood in the previous class, the ratio of omega 1 by omega 2 is a constant. Why it is constant? Because we are having a no slip condition. So whenever we are having a no slip condition, omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to constant. And also this is, and also O1 and point O2 are, are already fixed are already fixed okay so o1 and o2 are already fixed so we can say the point p is a fixed point okay is that clear is that clear if you are able to understand please tell me that means because if i say o1 and m will be oh yes this will be mp yes yes correct this will be PM or NP, same thing. NM is similar to PM. This is similar to this one. And this is similar to this one. Fine. So we correct. So we can say uh, if I assume O1 and O2 are fixed, are a fixed point, uh, are fixed, and omega 1 omega 2 is a constant. What's means? What's the meaning of this? This is equal to constant, and also O1 and O2 and fixed. So that means the P is so is, is a fixed point now this fixed point is a most important point this fixed point is basically known please tell me what will be this fixed point those who know the concept please tell me what will be this fixed point p 
O1 M uh, O1 MP and O2 NP will be a similar triangle. And if I say O1 and O2 are fixed point and it's passing through a, a, another uh, fixed point P. So what is the uh, meaning of what is the uh, definition of this point P? This point P is nothing but the pitch point. Nothing but the pitch point. Okay. So if I say this P point, the line of action must always pass through the fixed point. What is this fixed fixed point? This is basically a pitch point on the line joining the center of gear. <clears throat> Fine. So this statement, this statement is basically your law of gearing. This statement is basically the law of gearing. Now what is law of gearing? That means whenever, whenever the two gears are in mesh, the, uh, the line or, or we can say the line of action will always pass through a fixed point. And what is this fixed point? This fixed point is known as pitch point. Now yesterday we have understood a basic idea of pitch point. It's an imagine. Let us suppose this is O1. We having a pitch circle. This is your pitch circle of 1. And this is, let us suppose, this is O2, center of the gear number 2. And this is the pitch circle of gear number 2. Fine. So, always the line of action will always pass through a point, which is the pitch point. Fine. Clear? Yeah. This is all pass through a point. This is your line of action. This line is line of action. Clear? Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Very good. So, uh, uh, Madhav Rao, very good. It's a pitch point. Now, so we can say mating gears, we can say directly mating gears must be designed in such a way that always law of gearing is satisfied. Then only my dear friends, the two gears will be in mesh, they will be transmitting power. So this is the most important criteria. If I want to say the two gears are uh, having a meshing, so in that case, the law of gearing is satisfied. Clear? <clears throat> Law of gearing is satisfied and for uh, for having this your gear profiles needs to be designed. So this gear profiles which satisfy this condition is known as conjugate profiles. Is that clear? <clears throat> so most important thing. <clears throat> so if I say there is a power transmission between the two gears, that means they are having a gear profile. Now what is this gear profile? This gear profile is nothing but the conjugate profiles. Now there are basically two types of gear uh, conjugate profiles. Anyone who can tell me whether there are two uh, types of conjugate profiles? <clears throat> so conjugate profiles are basically two types. One is involute profile, involute profile, and second is your cycloidal profile. Okay, is that clear? So basically, we are having two types of conjugate profiles. So if I want to design any gear. If I want to design two meshing gears, so they should be having an involute profile or a cycloidal profile. Now, what is this involute profile and what is this cycloidal profile? Let us understand in detail. Okay, let me uh, help you uh, understand this quickly. Clear? <clears throat> Fine. Now, uh, before going into involute profile and a cycloidal profile, very good Harsha, <coughs> we should be knowing what is velocity of sliding. Now, it is also one of the most important thing. Now, what is velocity of sliding or we can say sliding velocity, your sliding velocity is equal to V1 sin alpha minus V2 sin beta, the mod of this this will be your sliding velocity okay now if i want what is v1 v1 is uh, let me remove this okay now v1 is o1 o1 q into into omega 1 q m by o1 q fine minus minus your o2 q into omega 2 into q n by o2 q clear fine so i have just substituted the value of v1 what is v1 just now i have told in the starting of the lecture this one v1 is o1 q into omega 1 and v2 is o2 q into omega 2 we have just now understood it 
okay so you can see from here also o1 o1 q into omega 1 will be v1 find this one clear this is your v2 fine uh, let us uh, expand this <clears throat> this will be cancelled this will also be cancelled so we can uh, directly write this uh, let me write it over here we can directly write this will be omega 1 into q m minus omega 2 into q n okay now we can write this q m what is q m this is q m so i can write q m as it is equal to q p plus q p plus p m you can see at the diagram so that you can concentrate on this diagram and please tell me if you're having any doubt and q n is p n minus p q clear fine so again what is uh, <coughs> we can write omega 1 q p plus omega 1 p m minus omega 2 p n minus omega 2 p q plus omega 2 p q now this will be cancelled out these two will be cancelled how this will be cancelled because we have just now seen omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to p n by q p just now we have seen so we can directly write this is equal to you can take <coughs> any doubt please tell me sorry now not this one these two will be cancelled out okay this is correct so we can write omega 1 minus omega 2 into p q fine so let me resume myself now <coughs> Now what you have seen, this is your O1, this is your O2, so uh, uh, <clears throat> this is your perpendicular, this is your perpendicular line, this is a line of action, this is your line of action of the force, this is two perpendicular lines, okay, and this is a line joining these two, this is your pitch point P, fine, and this is your beta, this is your alpha, now we have just seen, uh, seen that velocity of sliding is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2 into p q fine please tell me what will be the sliding velocity at point p please tell me because your your uh, point of contact is moving from point m to point n this is your uh, movement if the two t's are in mesh so it will be starting is engagement it will be the start of engagement this will be the end of engagement Please tell me what will be, what will be the velocity of sliding at point P. Because this is important thing. Please tell me what will be the velocity of sliding at point P. <clears throat> please tell me, anyone, <clears throat> those who are live with me, please respond. Because this is the important concept and from that will be defining the involute profile. Okay, that will be defining uh, the very important thing. Yes, what is the sliding velocity at point P? At point P, what is the velocity of sliding? What is uh, uh, point P? If I take this diagram, so Q is the point of contact which is moving from point N to point fine it is moving from this point to this point fine like this is the action, uh, line of action so point q is start it from this point and is ending its contact at this point so it will be definitely passing through this point p so tell me what is the velocity of sliding at point p anyone so velocity of sliding at point p that is at pitch point will be definitely equal to zero Please tell me if you are having any doubt. Let us suppose this is the point of contact. This is point Q. This is point Q. Okay. Fine. So it is basically moving from point M to point N. After that, your disengagement of the gear of the two meshing is starting. So if the point of contact is, uh, is coming at point P, then what is the distance between P and Q? This will be equal to zero. 
this will be equal to zero if this is equal to zero there is no velocity of sliding now what do you mean by when there is no sliding velocity what is the criteria or what is that condition called if sliding velocity if sliding velocity is equal to zero what's the meaning of this what a case what is the condition anyone if i'm saying the velocity of sliding is zero at point p what's the meaning of this yes because i want response from your side then only i'll be going to the next uh, subtopic because this is the very important thing so if i say uh, the velocity of sliding is equal to zero that means it is a condition of pure rolling i told you in the yesterday's class also so this point p is that point where a pure rolling case is happening a pure rolling case is happening except point p rest the point if you take if if you take any any other point let me use another color so that you can understand okay if you take any point let us suppose your point of contact this one fine let us this is a point of contact q so at this point would be having a partial sliding <clears throat> fine if if uh, let us suppose this is the point of contact at this point what will happen you won't be having pure rolling criteria at this point also there will be having a pure rolling criteria this point this point this point but at point p at point p will be having a pure rolling fine so please remember if i talk about when the two gears are engaging if the two gears are in mesh so we having a pure rolling condition only at a single point which is point p okay if it is pure rolling exactly very very good we will be having constant velocity ratio at that point very good harsha fine so what do you mean by that that means at this point only we will be having a constant velocity ratio or we can say we will be having a pure rolling criteria fine and this point p very important this point p is known as pitch point okay this point p is known as pitch point clear now uh, we have not discussed, we have just now discussed the conjugate profile there are basically two conjugate profile involute profile and cyclic profile now what do you mean by involute profile let us understand this because we need to understand how the gears are being designed okay because this is somewhat uh, some theoretical portion so that is why students won't be having a clear understanding but this is also important when you are studying for esc it is very important uh, the design of gears so in that you should be knowing the two profiles is called involute profile this is most important fine and uh, esc they are usually asking a question of this topic fine so involute profile what is involute profile it is a locus of a point on a line which rolls without sliding on a fixed circle so let us suppose let us suppose we are having a fixed circle this is your fixed circle okay this is your fixed circle fine so over this fixed circle we are um, uh, keeping a straight line okay and i am marking a point let us suppose this point is a and what i am doing i am uh, turning i am rolling this line i am rolling this straight line without slipping i am rolling the straight line without slipping so this point will be this point a1 this is point a2 so this is basically the locus of different points so when you join this when you join this points so this profile is basically known as your involute profile is that clear fine so <clears throat> what is involute profile it is a locus of point uh, on a line which rolls without slipping please make sure this is very important fine so without slipping on a fixed circle <clears throat> this is a fixed circle which is known as base circle will be understand this when i'll be defining you the pitch uh, circle okay fine so because of a point on a line which goes without slipping on a fixed circle this profile is basically known as involute profile similarly the second profile which most of the students are not uh, studying because it's not there in undergraduate but you should be knowing the definition of cycloid profile now what is cycloid profile it is basically the locus of the point it is basically the locus of the point on the circumference on the circumference of circle 
which rolls which rolls without slipping which rolls without slipping on a fixed straight line is that clear so in the previous case in the in involute profile what was happening circle was fixed and the line was moving without slipping but in case of cycloid profile line is fixed what is line your circle is uh, rolling without slipping so the point let us suppose this is uh, one of the point find this is fun point same point 2 it is rolling same circle it is rolling fine this is your point 4 this is point 5 this is point 6 so when you join these points this profile we are form is known as cycloidal profile okay cycloidal profile i'll be showing you the image real life uh, uh, the gear which is being used so now this gear this profile this basically this profile which is shown on the t this is the uh, this is your involute profile this is your involute profile and this profile is basically your cycloid is that clear <clears throat> fine <clears throat> so there are two profiles uh, on the basis of which the gear is being designed one is involute profile and second is cycloid profile so we have understood it in detail uh, without i suppose there is no doubt uh, in the two profiles because this is very important uh, for understanding the base of gear okay fine so if i say when the two gears are in mesh is there pure rolling yes definitely there is a pure rolling only at a single point that, that point is called pitch point is that clear fine now let us understand now the pitch circle i i we have discussed this in the yesterday's class but now it's the time to understand more briefly now what is pitch circle it is an imaginary circle in the gears when pure rolling motion is observed when the mating gears are transmitting power that means let us suppose this is gear number one this is gear number two okay this is your pitch circle this is your pitch circle okay for a two and this is the pitch circle for one pitch circle for one okay now and if i draw a common tangent let us suppose this horizontal line is a common tangent and this is the line of action this is the line of action fine this is the line of action this point is known as pitch point is that clear now uh just now i've told you in the involute profile there is a base circle okay there's a base circle in this now i'll be showing you what is base circle in this diagram so if i draw a circle okay if i draw a circle over here this will be your base circle so this point is your point m and this point is your point n now i suppose it's clear what is the meaning of this point that means when the two gears are in mesh the point m is the start of engagement and point n is the end of engagement and this is basically nothing but a common tangent this is nothing but a common tangent between the two this circle is basically the base circle is that clear please tell me if this you are winging it out base circle so what is this line line of action so i can i can say line of action is nothing but a common tangent of base circle <clears throat> no it's a base circle it's not didentum <clears throat> it's base circle is that clear Space circle. Fine. Shemu. Didendum is uh, didendum is entirely different. What is didendum? Is the uh, is the base of that uh, teeth. If if I take this is the teeth. Suppose this is teeth. Fine. So this is known as the didendum circle. This is your pitch circle and this is your addendum circle. This is your addendum circle. This is your pitch circle and this is your didendum circle. And normally we are uh, taking uh, the gears. To be having a like this okay fine sometimes it is having a same this circle sometimes it's also known as base circle but we usually need to uh, define 
differently fine most of the books if i see indian authors they are defining dendritum circle and base circle to be same which is and which is entirely wrong okay you should be knowing that is basically the base circle to which your common tangent is passing your common tangent is passing which is perpendicular to this clear fine shemu clear understood the pitch circle next is your circular pitch what is circular pitch it is basically pi d by t that means the ratio of your circumference by number of teeth okay next is module module is the most important this is the most important parameter in gear it is the ratio of pitch circle diameter to the number of teeth and always it is denoted in calculated in mm okay so for gear specification module is used for gear specification fine so module is basically used for gear specification okay fine and what is diametrical pitch diametrical pitch is basically the ratio of it's basically inverse of module but the diameter is usually taken in inches <clears throat> so <clears throat> what is a module it is d by t so <clears throat> uh, for gear to be in mesh for gear to be in mesh what is the condition omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to r2 by r1 this is the condition or else we can say it is equal to d2 by d1 and it is equal to constant it is equal to constant okay so if i write omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to m into t m into t2 fine so always remember when the gears are in mesh they will be having same module okay we'll be having discussion uh, in the gear train topic also so uh, the same topic will be having a discussion so always remember whenever the two gears are in mesh they will be having the same module <laughs> no uh, clear circle is somewhat different if i talk about clear and circle let me show you over here let us suppose this is your center one okay and this is the straight line and this is o2 this is your base circle base circle 2 and this is your base circle because you should be having uh, students do have a confusion this is your pitch circle for one and this is your pitch circle for two and this is your pitch point clear now uh, let me draw the uh, addendum circle so that you can understand you guys can understand <clears throat> let us suppose this is the addendum this is the addendum circle let us suppose this black line which i have drawn is addendum this is addendum circle of gear 2 now please tell me <coughs> no clearance is somewhat different i'll be telling you what is clearance right now in this diagram please tell me if i are having a condition like this where uh, your addendum circle is overlapping or is, uh, is cutting the base circle of this so what is the meaning of this one <coughs> so what will happen <coughs> if you are having a criteria where addendum circle of the mating gears is cutting the base circle of the uh, the corresponding pair gear so what will happen please tell me <coughs> what will happen <coughs> if i am say what is addendum circle is the tip of uh, the teeth so if i draw it what is basically happening this is your teeth this is your teeth okay this is your teeth and this is the base circle let us suppose uh, the base circle is approximately equal to the addendum circle okay let us suppose we are having criteria and this is the addendum if it is cutting the base circle so what will happen please tell me quickly so if you are having condition like this it will be cutting the other teeth that means the, obviously will be having teeth over here whose addendum circle will be uh, having let us suppose this is the uh, teeth number 2 so what will happen this teeth will be cutting the base of the other teeth fine is that clear please tell me please respond to me if if you are able to understand 
Please tell me if you are able to understand it. Is that clear? That means the end of this is the teeth. The end is the tip of the teeth. So it will be basically cutting the base circle. And this is known as interference. So for that, in order to not to having like the condition we will be undercutting the, uh, the other teeth. So what we'll do, we'll do, we'll have some clearance. So what we'll do, we'll be having some clearance. Fine. We'll be having a clearance. Let me show you now the clearance circle. Let me show you the clearance circle. Okay. So in that case, we'll be having some clearance so that your gear is not under clearance. Let's suppose this is your clearance circle. This is your clearance circle. Okay. Clearance circle. So that what will happen if the teeth is so teeth, your addendum circle is if it is cut. Touching the clearance circle also, this is your atom circle for two. Still, your undercutting won't be happening, and the life of the teeth will be same, or it will be safe. Okay, it's not in, it's interference. Yes, so life of the teeth will be higher. So that is why we are providing a circle, a clearance circle, so that we'll be having some uh, difference between the addendum of the circle of the gear two with the base uh, circle of gear one. Clear? <clears throat> understood clear now let us understand uh, and i hope so now now we have understood uh, the definition of gear uh, how the profile is being made and uh, how the pitch circle is playing an important role in defining the gears is that clear fine any doubt please tell me if you are having any doubt and also like yesterday one student asked about the backlash is undercut yes it's exactly the undercut fine so so basically uh, if this is the teeth of a gear okay this is the teeth of the gear fine so this region will be having undercut so what we'll basically do we will be having this complete to be because if you are having a uh, inverted profile so we'll be having an inverted profile at this point and we'll be having some portion this is a this portion is a non in volute profile this is a non inverted profile why we are taking this non inverted profile so that the meshing is not the, the teeth are not having in contact at this point so it will be having this will be the last point of contact last point of contact is that clear fine so that non invalid profile will be acting as a clearance circle fine that non invalid profile will be acting as a clearance circle is that clear fine understood undercut non because every gear will be having a non invalid profile and why it is provided so that your undercut has uh, is being uh, restricted or it is being avoided clear so in order to uh, avoid undercut or interference, we are providing a non involute profile so that your meshing will always occur to this point. Because this profile, this complete profile till this point, till this point is. <coughs> so uh, so sir, sir, a clear circle will be in between base circle. Yes, definitely. I have shown you in the previous slide. So your clearance circle, this is your base circle. Okay, this is your clearance circle, this is your pitch circle, and this is your addendum. This is your addendum of gear. Yeah. This will be your addendum of gear one. Understood? Fine. Now uh, I suppose now you have understood the basics of gear, and now you will be uh, trying to Please try to understand this gear topic. Uh, the starting of the gears is somewhat theoretical. So that is why I have taken uh, this session into two segments so that your base is being, you can understand the basics of gear. Okay. So uh, now we'll, now let us conclude the session and uh, we'll be talking about gear trains in the next topic. And also I'll be taking up some numericals for you guys because 
we need to apply some concept on the numerical part also so please be connected on monday we'll be having a session on gear trains and the gear trains will be uh, uh, solving one or two problems so that you can apply the concept because this now you have built up your base okay now you have built up the base of the gear now uh, you can definitely uh, uh, are ready to study a topic on gear train yeah so thank you guys this was it from my side if i talk about the uh, course which is going on uh, on the grade up this is vision 2021 course uh, batch 2 is going on so uh, let me use yes batch 2 is going on right now uh, it's a complete 550 hours of course and live evening classes uh, are there from monday to friday from monday to friday uh, the classes are going on uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. in the evening and 9.30 to 11.30 p.m. Okay, so uh, just stay connected with us and enjoy the live free classes uh, on the YouTube and you can enjoy uh, the, the free trial of the Vision 2021 courses which is going on in the Glader platform. And if I talk about the scholarship, 50% discount is provided for all the gate qualified for 17, 18, 19, and 20 also. So those students who have just qualified 20, uh, get 2020, they can definitely apply for this 50% off. Okay, so IIT, NIT, government BTEC students will be getting 50%. EAC students, qualified students will be having 50% off. You can contact at this number. This is your mail. This is the mail ID. You can contact Mr. Anand Pandey for any assistance. Fine. Thank you guys for being with me. Uh, uh, and uh, from Monday onwards, uh, I'll be taking my, uh, we'll be taking the classes uh, with full internet connection. So don't worry about this. It's only a matter of one or two days. From Monday onwards, we'll be having a full-fledged classes of the theory of machines. Clear? So thank you guys. And uh, I would like to convey the most important message is please be safe. Please be healthy don't travel uh, that much don't uh, avoid using public transportation stay at your home so definitely uh, if health is there you will be having your uh, ranking you can you can study afterward also the first and most foremost thing is the health if health is there wealth will definitely come to you okay so thank you guys for joining with me uh, you can prep smart and stay safe with grade up thank you guys <clears throat> Uh, in which exam equation will be used to find the number of teeth? Please tell, sir. <clears throat> uh, that is basically used uh, 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 to talk about interference. Okay. <clears throat> Due to the shortage of time, uh, I am not able to take the interference topic. Fine. So, don't worry. If uh, time allows in the later on stages, I will be taking a special session on interference. Uh, it is basically the minimum number of teeth required to avoid interference. Okay. So, we are having a T minimum formula directly uh, you uh, can take up the derivation but it's not uh, uh, it's not there the time is not allowing me to take the derivation right now so don't worry the in the future classes i'll be taking a session on the interference uh, where minimum number of t's required for to avoid interference that uh, equation is used and we're having a path of contact arc of contact path of recess arc of recess everything we'll be discussing in that topic okay guys so thank you uh, for joining with me uh, stay safe and uh, just subscribe to this channel like it share it and from my words you'll be having a discussion on some numericals on the k10 topics okay fine thank you guys uh, so this is suraj signing off